Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the engineers from the tech support and applications team at Park Systems. I'm going to be going through a demonstration of using the new Park NX10 atomic force microscope uh, by going through an entire sample run from loading the sample in the probe to taking a scan and then measuring some feature of interest. So let me introduce the components of the Park NX10 microscope system. So we have a user control station. Um, a cabinet full of the computer and the electronics that run the AFM, and then the microscope itself that sits in an acoustic enclosure to block it from sound and light in the room. The major components of the AFM are a sample stage that scans the sample in a plane parallel to the ground, which we label the XY plane, an AFM head that contains the probe that's used for the scanning and then all the components required to sense what that probe is doing. And then an optical microscope so we can see where we're scanning on the sample and align the probe to some feature of interest. And we can see the feed of the optical microscope through a camera that's connected to the computer at the user control station. The sample I'm using for this demonstration is a piece of anodic aluminum oxide which is interesting because it has nanoscale features. It's used to study nanoscale physics and also as a template for building very small structures. So let me load that in the AFM. And now let me change out the probe that we're going to be using to make this scan. To do that, we remove the AFM head. And the probes are attached to steel carriers so they magnetically snap in and out of the head. So let me remove the one that was in there. And then snap in the new one. And then replace the head back on the microscope. Alright, so now that the AFM probe we're going to be using to take the scan is loaded into the microscope, the next thing we want to do is make sure that the detection beam that senses what this probe is doing is aligned first to the back of the cantilever and then the reflection is aligned to the middle of the detector that reads out what it's doing. So first, let me do the alignment to the back of the cantilever, looking at the feed from the optical microscope, aligning it first along one axis and then along the other. And now let me align it to the middle of the detector that picks up what it's doing by the same procedure. First aligning it along one axis and then along the other. All right, so now that's done. And now we're ready to find a place on our sample and begin scanning. Now I'm going to use the motorized controls in the data acquisition software to adjust where on the sample the probe is going to be scanning when we take an AFM image. So. Let me adjust the light source to the optical microscope and then move the probe closer to the sample. Okay, so now the probe is getting pretty close to the sample. So now I can pan the sample around and find a good place to scan. All right, so once you found a place to scan on your sample, you can go ahead and close up the door to the acoustic enclosure. And now I can do the rest of the control from the computer station. First, I want to configure the AFM to take a measurement with the particular probe that's in there right now. Uh, that involves just clicking a button and then accepting all the choices that have been made automatically by the AFM. And now I can click the approach button to tell the AFM to actually bring the sample very close to the surface so that it's sensing the surface of the sample we're going to be measuring. Okay, so now that the probe is done approaching the sample surface, you can go ahead and enter in the parameters for the image we'd like to collect. So I can enter in a scan size and a scan rate. And then if I need to, I can adjust the parameters that control the feedback loop, which controls the motion of the probe over the sample surface to make sure that I'm getting a good image. And when I'm done with that, I can click start to go ahead and collect one. So let me take an image of the sample. Okay, so now that our image is finished scanning, 
I can send it over to the image analysis software and we can look at a few of the things that are easy to do to get interesting measurements or display this data in interesting ways. So first of all, if I load up the 3D view of the data, we can see the raw unprocessed image. So we can see that it's sort of on a tilt because I was scanning one of the sides of this undulating surface on our sample here. So uh, to make this easier to, for us to view, let me just rotate the data to untilt it. And then we can look at a few of the things that a researcher studying this material might want to observe. So one thing we might be interested in is the diameter of these pores on this surface. A few different ways we could take measurements of that are we could draw in a line and look at a height profile along that line. Or we could use the automated grain detect feature in the software to count the number of pores for us and give us statistics about the average length and the average area. So these are just a few of the, the ways you, you can uh, take quick, easy measurements in the PARC image analysis software. That was a demonstration of the PARC NX10 Atomic Force Microscope. Thanks for your attention, and for more information, visit us online at parkafm.com.